bushwhacking in America. It is actually not possible to bushwhack in America. That's the only thing that they never prepare you for. United States especially is new, and the wild animals are still wild. In Europe, a squirrel is your friend. In the US, you are seen as an interesting nuisance. You are beneath the squirrels who have lived here for thousands of years. And no amount of little snacks will ever change their mind. I fed them enough peanuts to make the cashier ladies wonder if maybe I was a squirrel myself. With everything I've done for the local squirrels, they still see me as a weakling. I actually stopped buying them peanuts now because I got tired of feeling inadequate. When I'm tired after the gym and take an extra moment to stretch my legs in the car, they line up on the parking lot fence just to judge me from above. But the squirrels aren't even the biggest problem. It's the skunks. The American skunk shoots a mist of spray straight out of its butt at anybody. And I mean anybody who comes even remotely close. And since they come out after dark and are dark, think Pepe Le Pew, you cannot help but to get too close. They only leave you with one option. Stay home after it gets dark. And before you ask, no, you can't outsmart a skunk. They evolved for the same amount of time we did, and their butts are as powerful as our brains. If you take a flashlight out there in hopes of avoiding a skunk, They'll just run straight at ya, but first, with an attitude that says, Let me show you something shiny, and spray in the direction of the light you are holding. Several of my neighbors were attacked just this year, and none of them really recovered, like, at all. Each smells strangely sweetly now, and no amount of perfume can undo a strange undertone. In fact, perfumes only enhance that smell. Apparently, an entire family got chased out of their house once. A skunk followed their dog home and found the walls, furniture, and their attitude not to its liking. It opened up like a fire hose. They sold everything, including their dog, and immigrated. I recently saw who I suspect was an older woman sprinting home, holding on to her hair. She sounded like a Chewbacca in heat, and I knew instantly that it was a fat bat in her hair. She hasn't sprinted that fast since 1965, but let me tell you something. That bat was barely hanging on. <laughs> the bats were particularly bad this year. They just blindly fly in circles until they stick to someone's head. I'm guessing that's why they wear hats in Texas. The last thing you need is a bad hair day. My personal problem is with the deer. I always thought of them very sweetly. But earlier this year, a beautiful one came into the neighborhood as I was eating a fig. In all the excitement and confusion, I dropped the fig on the floor and then decided it was a sign that I should deliver it to the beautiful deer. I got within the range, and feeling like I might get poked, I threw the fig the rest of the way, and it got close enough for the deer to notice. 
But animals don't think the way we do. They don't know sharing or even clumsiness. What the deer saw was a scantily dressed plump man bolt out of his house with a jiggly butt that signaled always hungry and a rock in his hand that signaled a fight to the death. Two creatures enter, one creature leaves. <laughs> I'm not the type of a person who is serious enough to fight wild animals and would probably die trying to ride it to show all my neighbors that I am one with nature and kind of pretty cool. And you know what? The deer has visited me every couple of weeks since most recently, with his kids. And it is always the same. They come way too close, I get scared, and then they stare. I feel like the father is teaching his kids what a dumbass looks like. The worst thing is that he eventually found the fig, so he knows that I was just being nice to him. <laughs> 